I'm ready when you are. Welcome back, everybody, to another brilliant, leaky episode. I wanted to jump straight into it to see if I could catch you off guard. <laughs> Be like mid-eye scratch. Who's ready to leak today? <laughs> Have you all been leaking since last week? I hope so. I hope so. Leak on the floor, leak on the mom. Leak on the mom? <laughs> yeah, leak on, not your mom, just someone's mom. Leak on them. If we ever make merch, we should just only make mops. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. And we need to like, we need to have like a, a one of like us up against the wall, like public indecency, like pissing against the wall out in public. And it's like, oh, I'll never tell. <laughs> Whoops, I'm leaking. Public leaker number one. Oh no, oh no. So much has happened since last week, by which I mean absolutely fucking nothing has happened since last week. I was about to say, stuff has happened since <laughs> last week. I got sick, like and that was it. And I had an illness for like 10 days, and it finally went away. Aren't you happy for me? I'm so happy for you, and I'm currently a little bit sick. It's starting to go away. I leaked. I leaked all over uh... you. You leaked, and then I absorbed the leakage. <laughs> oh, no. Well, top of the news and the morning to you, laddies. Um, we're not number one on Spotify anymore, or anywhere no. for that matter. <laughs> We've been no. kicked off our world podium. Are we still in the in the top rankings? We're somewhere. I think we're still, like, top five. I'm sure that'll plummet drastically. Unless you leakers out there are promoting the podcast constantly. Just, you know how people put like stickers of stuff up on walls and stuff? Just piss everywhere and spell our names out in it. Is, is Be that like, the legacy that we're trying to create? Yeah, it's like, uh, like follow Brain Leak Podcast. Like, just make sure you have enough piss to spell that out. Why does piss follow me everywhere? Because <laughs> you're a little pissy boy. I don't know. You explain it. I don't know. I don't know how to explain. It's unexplainable. It's like God and the Loch Ness Monster. I can't explain it. At least when you drank your own piss, it was for content. And you tried to filter it. It's not like you just drank your piss. Also, for the record, and I've said this many a time, but I feel like it's important to say that I didn't technically drink it. I tasted it. It was like a wine tasting. Right? <laughs> it had very... Some would say notes. that that's where all the flavor is. It doesn't matter if you put it in your body as long as you've tasted it. Exactly. See, the thing is, when I was younger, I tried to taste my own piss just for fun. Did you? Yeah, I mean, I'm a teenager and I'm like, what does my body do? What is the meaning of life? <laughs> so, oh Let God, this is going to be another one of those stories where I've shit myself, I've cut my balls, now I've drank my own piss. <laughs> the that's... cutting your balls one was during a fucking ad read too, <laughs> which was very funny. <laughs> okay, cutting my balls, it wasn't, well, it was that bad. I, you know, we're, okay, this is going to get like TMI for a lot of people, but I don't care. That's what Brain Leak is about. I can't say this on my YouTube channel. I feel like channel. Brain Leak is slowly turning into just therapy for you. <laughs> <laughs> where you just bring up old trauma. What have I done with forgot. my genitals? What have I done just in the regions that I normally don't show? Mm. It was like, you know when you're young and you're like, at, at some point in your life, everyone's thought about shaving their pubic hair. And it's like, should I shave it all off? What's that like? Is it weird? Is it fun? Turns out it's not. <laughs> should I shave it all off? <laughs> should I just shave it all off? You've never woken up one morning and you were like, should I just shave my balls today? Like, how how close to the skin can I get? Uh, hold on, I'm just trying to think of, like... Have you in your life ever fully gotten down to the skin shaven? Yes. Yeah. See, I feel like everyone in their life has at least tried. Uh-huh. And when I tried, where my balls met my other parts, that skin, like, got cut, and it kind of, like, separated a little, and I was like... Like your taint? No, no, the front region. Like, lift, uh. lift up the boober and the banglers. <laughs> and where they're hanging from that. Thank you so much for using the, the anatomically correct terms. <laughs> Scientifically correct. That's where it's separated. And I it uh -huh. started to bleed. And I really thought that if I lifted my, my gentleman anymore, that it was just going to separate. <laughs> and my balls would just fall out onto the floor. <laughs> just peel off. Yeah. I thought that's what was happening. I thought I was getting scalped. <laughs> <laughs> just 
on a different brain. Uh, a different brain leak. I was brain oh. leaking before I knew it. You had no idea. But the time oh I drank God. my piss was just like, what was that like? <laughs> and then I tried it and I was like, <laughs> I was like, okay, never it's do bad. that again. Never do that again. It tastes worse than it smells. I didn't have a lot of, I'm trying to think of shit that I did when I was a kid and I didn't have a lot of stuff like that where I was just like, maybe I'll shave my whole body <laughs> right now. There was nothing to do in Ireland. You were off doing gymnastics. I was splitting my balls open. <laughs> you must have some stories, well, maybe that you don't want to tell, but you've never shat yourself and scooped it out, split your balls. No, I... I, for I sure. had a normal well, childhood. Well, one time I did... I feel like all of our stories on the podcast now are just going to be times that we shit our pants. I shit my pants, like, full log <laughs> when I was, like... You full dumpster was, like, dive. Yeah, when I was, like, 10 or 12. I was really into skateboarding at the time. And so I was in the I was in the driveway and I was trying to learn how to do a kickflip and I was like I kind of have to poop but I really got to land this kickflip. <laughs> <laughs> and then and then I flew too close to the sun. <laughs> and I was like I have to I have to go inside and so I started running full oh, speed yeah. running inside and then I was like I'm not going to make it. And so I just kind of committed and I just full <laughs> shit in my pants. You're like I've ever seen that clip of the kid. It's like a vine where it's like, are you excited? He's like, yeah. He's like, yeah. It's like, you taking a shit? And he's like, yeah. <laughs> it was just, like I just imagine you running away and then it's like, well, if I'm going to do it, I might as well like full send it. Yeah, because it's like I have to throw away these pants anyway now. At this oh, point, you don't so. have to. I don't think I threw away the uh, ones I shit in. <laughs> Wait. Did you not? No, I did. It was like a pair of jeans that were old. Yeah, and jeans, they'll they will really... They they have genetic memory for sure. Yeah, it's like a cast iron pan. <laughs> they'll keep that in there forever. Yeah, I didn't preheat and oil my pants. Oh, I did shit myself when I was like a kid, though. Well, I feel like we all have. God, why? I've shit myself and I've pissed myself in class. I didn't shit myself in class, I pissed <laughs> myself in class. Okay. All of these are getting aired out. This is the cursed episode. I I had to poop when I was at a friend's house, and well, I was... Well, don't, don't let them all go, because then we won't have any content for future <laughs> episodes. How will we record another episode? Oh, I'm sure I have plenty more. I, I pooped myself. I was at a friend's house, and I was like, oh, I really got to poop, but I don't want to <laughs> do it in their toilet. Because, I don't know, I was particular about That's it, That's always the worst. I don't like... I don't... I don't like shitting other places. Yeah, it's not like I want to shit someone else's pants. Especially now that I have a bidet. If I'm at a place and there's no bidet and I have to poop, it's uh, I you know, it just doesn't it doesn't feel right. Yeah, it feels it like going back feel, in time. It does. We should get a bidet sponsorship. I feel like bidets are coming around now where they're they're getting more accessible for everybody because they used to be like a couple hundred bucks, but now they're getting a little bit cheaper, and it's a little bit easier, and you can do it all at home yourself. Yeah, and if you just shit in the shower, then there's one right there. Just take the head this off is and true. start scrubbing. This is true. And some people are going to say, oh, is it really that great to use a bidet? Like, blah, 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 blah. I'll just wipe. Think about it this way. Here he goes. Here he goes. If you have dirty hands, right? If you have dirty hands, would you rather wash your hands in the sink with water? Or would you rather just use a dry cloth and, like, what does that do? Yeah, when I scooped the shit out of my pants with my own hands, I didn't go back and use tissue and go, hmm, all better now. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, hug me, mom. <laughs> no. Did you still have shit in your pants when you hugged your mother? No, see, when people think about the story, I think they expect me to have, like, full, like, slurry in my jeans. But it was, like, mm -hmm. it was pretty solid. Like, you could, like, how you pick up dog poop with a bag. It's like, you don't yeah. leave a whole bunch of it behind. It was kind of like that. It wasn't like I was scooping chocolate ice cream. <laughs> well, that's, um, that's pretty lucky. Because I feel like at least we're, we're really getting to... You, you guys at home are really getting to know us now on an intimate <laughs> level. When I get really drunk and I poop, it's <laughs> not regular. <laughs> no, that's the morning after. 
But the night of, I was clean. Ah, oh, damn. It was like nothing but headshots. Just clean. <laughs> So when I was at my friend's house, I didn't want to poop. So I uh -huh. I ran home, and they live like three doors down from me. So it's like a it's like a minute, and yeah. on the way in my driveway, it just started like turtling. And then, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? It doesn't feel great. It's like no, when you're a baby and you just do it, you just don't have a brain to think about it. But when you're older and you know better, babies are idiots. Babies are so dumb. This is the guy who so shit his pants funny. twice. <laughs> Babies are such idiots. I was I know that we shared the same the same love for this. Um I was at the zoo the other day. Oh hell yeah. Um and it was very fun cuz uh, some friends of mine were in town. So we went to the zoo and there was a slight hill and from the corner of my eye, I just saw a toddler running down the hill. <laughs> and it didn't happen, unfortunately. But I was like, please fall, 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 fall. <laughs> because seeing children fall, because, like, as long as they don't actually get hurt, yeah. it's so funny. <laughs> so funny. <laughs> oh, man. Because they have no concept of, of, like, how to use their body yet. So they don't know that, like... Oh, if you get running too fast down this hill, you're yeah. not going to be able to control your legs anymore, and then you're going to fall and eat shit. And it's so funny. I wonder how many times we've fallen as kids that made adults laugh. And I I hope oh. someone got a belly ache out of one of mine. I hope so, too. Oh, man. Have you ever, have you ever done that thing? We, we used to have a thing like Cub Scouts where we would go on a retreat to this kind of like cabin. I can't I remember. I didn't know you were a scout. <laughs> Scout's honor. What is the scout's honor? I have no idea. Get out while you can. <laughs> Stay away you, from the grown men. Do you remember any knots or anything cool? No, I wasn't in it for very long. And it was like mm. cubs, so I was on the way to scouts, which would be where you actually learn all the cool shit. But we went on like a retreat to a cabin in like the woods somewhere. <laughs> and then we all died. Wow. But we had a thing where we were like, we had a, like a race from the top of a hill down. And have you ever done that thing where you run so hard that like your legs are literally falling off your body? Like gravity, yeah. gravity is way stronger than any of us will ever be. And you're, it feels, it feels like your joints don't work and your legs are like spinning like a doll. And then you just start tumbling. It's like if you're on a, like on a tricycle and you start going down a hill and then you just, you have to take your feet off of the pedals. And the yeah. pedals just go <laughs> That's kind of what your legs do. It's like you just have to trust in Jesus at that point, and Jesus has no good plans for you. No good plans. But yeah, I I tumbled hard that day, and I hope all the adults watching were like, I hope they were just like <laughs> out of the side of their face. I bet that I ate shit as a kid. Because until my gymnastics years, which were I started when I was like seven, I don't imagine that I had any talents in normal life <laughs> whether it was walking reading none of them so i hope i fell I, and i hope i fell hard i hope at least i was a good like slapstick kind of comedy i mean i had to have been that's why i can't do math i had to have hit my head i actually i did hit my head i how am i how am i forgetting or how could i remember is how i should <laughs> phrase it I I split my head open like five times as a kid, Whoa. and once it happened between uh, in the same week, and so my dad had to bring me to a different hospital because he <laughs> didn't want them to think that he was like abusing his like child, throwing you down the stairs. Yeah, because I was just dumb and like, I think the the one time that I remember was I was at my dad's office and they had a long hallway that led into like the kitchen area. Uh -huh. And so the hallway was all tile. And so I would sprint down that and then slide. Um, but then the last time that I did it, I slid too far and I had too much speed and I slammed the back of my head. I slipped and I slammed the back of my Ooh. head on like the corner of a wall. Damn. It was great. It was hey, this time. explains and so much. I know, and then another time I was spinning around and I slipped and I hit, I still have, it probably won't show up on camera, but I still have a slight scar. Oh, I can kind of see it, yeah. In, yeah, in between my nose. I slipped after spinning 
and uh, slam my face on the edge of a speaker. Ooh. That was fun. Dude, you your dad beat the that. shit out of you. I know. <laughs> and then another time, my brother and I were playing downstairs, and we were playing with a yoga ball, and we were throwing it back and forth, and oh, I was standing yeah. in front of a column, and he hit me in the face, and then I like slammed my head back. It was sick. Why did you do these things outdoors? I don't know. It's Maine, so maybe it was wintertime. We didn't want to go out into the harsh That's true. The harsh nature. You know? I I split my head once, like right on the very top. And I it was I was at that same friend's house that I was like, I'm not pooping here. Was that Porig? Yeah, Porig and Sean. Uh because I didn't have any other friends. <laughs> and I was we were outside and it was like there was bats flying around. And was, I remember it was the first time I'd ever seen a bat like in real life. And it was actually flying around and we could kind of see it and it was really dark. And we were like, let's go see where they were coming from. We went into his shed that had a bunch of like turf built up. You know what turf is, don't you? Oh, shit, dude, you have 90 minutes. Dude, there's a callback. Anyone who didn't go to my tour, fuck you, you're not getting the answers to that joke. Unbelievable. We were standing on top of that and it was like pitch black inside and I didn't realize they had like a big steel girder going across the, the length of the shed. And I like stood up too quick and like, it just sounded like <laughs> <laughs> and it's like a fucking Latin mass. <laughs> and I, I can just like see you doing that in like a fucking <laughs> Looney Tunes cartoon. Your body just vibrating. And the birds are flying around my head. <laughs> For anyone listening at home and not watching, that was not a sound effect added in. That was my bottle. Yeah, Omne this is padre real. Sanctus. <laughs> that was real Foley done live. And I, years. I remember like reaching up and being like, oh, that hurt. And I was like, oh, that's a little wet. And I like came down and there was blood all over my hand. Ugh. And then I just went home. <laughs> <laughs> I just went home and I was like, I think I'm okay. Well, how far away was the nearest hospital? Oh, like 20 minutes mm. to drive. I mean, we had like doctor's offices around that could probably do stitches and stuff. It was a town of 600 people. <laughs> they, were, they weren't open ever. <laughs> yeah, it was like, it was 9 p.m. Like, who's open? What doctor's open at that hour? What is this, New York City? We did some dumb stuff when I was a kid. Like, we would just jump off of uh, our porch. Hell yeah. Uh, for, for fun. So the porch was like, it's probably like 10 feet off the ground. Mm -hmm. um, because my house growing up was on a hill. And so there was a big porch, uh, and then there was stairs to climb down. It's okay. you know, That's you know good, how, yeah. You know how things work. <laughs> I, I know but, what a porch looks like. <laughs> <laughs> but we would jump off of that just for fun because we had nothing else to do. Mm -hmm. But then in the wintertime, when my parents weren't home, uh, my brother's room, you could get onto the roof. So we would jump off of the roof. <laughs> in the winter time when the snow was deep enough <laughs> we would just fucking jump off of the roof of our house into the snow and I don't know how we didn't fucking break our legs how much how many inches of snow would you guys get if it was real good we'd have like a few feet of snow damn so you just vanish into it into the sick pow dude dude into that fucking fog, white powder know? Pow. That was like most of what my brother and I did when we were younger, which is just jumping off of things. We would also take his mattress uh, and just put it in the yard and jump off of the roof. Hell the yeah. Since you guys got a lot of snow and ice and stuff, did you ever do the thing where you would like purposefully ice a patch so you could slide on it? No, we didn't do that. But what would happen, and it was so fucking sick, is we would have like a couple feet of snow and then sometimes it would rain and so there would be, it would rain and then it would get cold again. So there would just be a thin layer of ice on all the snow. And because we were kids, we weren't heavy enough to break that. And so you basically just had a giant ice rink in your yard. That's cool. Awesome. Yeah, that we had, so um, we did it in our school when I was a kid. We like snuck up at nighttime and like poured water all over it. And then we're hoping that the school wouldn't run that day. And then it did, but it turns out we were just all out sliding around that morning. But I remember <laughs> in like, I think it was 2009, Ireland had a really bad winter, like super, one of the worst we've ever had. And it was so cold outside and I was living in a log cabin, so I was dying. But we, we lived in the middle of nowhere. So me and my brother went out and would like 
on our driveway would just put uh, like water down so we could slide from the driveway down to the road. And it was like a good, what, like 30 feet? Uh, we even did that thing where it was like, we'll boil the water first so there's less impurities in it so the ice will freeze better. I was like, I don't think that's a thing. <laughs> no, that's... So we did that and then we would like slide all around. But I remember falling super hard on my fucking tailbone where that point where it's mm -hmm. like, you want to like bend the other way, it like jolts you upright. And you're like, God, I fucking hurt. Man, I, I don't want to sound like an old man, but <laughs> I, so what spurred this thought was um, my mom, I think it was last year, she gave me for Christmas just all of the uh, like old mini DV tapes from our like camera from back in the day. So I had them all digitized. So I have like 30 hours of footage from like the late 90s early 2000s that's cool and it was really fun looking through a bunch of that footage but it made me kind of sad because thinking about like all the dumb shit that my brother and i did and like my friends and stuff and there's so much footage of people actually living their lives because cell phones didn't exist and i'm like man do kids do dumb shit nowadays because you just have everything because so many kids have phones and ipads and the internet and it's just like man do kids like go around and fuck around in the woods <laughs> like we used to just go in the woods and kick down dead trees hell yeah i love doing run. that <laughs> you like kick it and then if there was a tall one you have to like get out of the way really quick and like yeah. dodge it and it like it'll like collapse in on itself it's yeah so fun i think they do i think in smaller towns kids probably do that because they just want to go out and explore the woods but i i miss you miss what I miss riding around on bikes with my friends. Me being too. A big old, being a, a big old biker gang. <laughs> wreaking <laughs> havoc in the woods. The biker mice from Maine. <laughs> mm. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, I was thinking about that because I used to play out in the woods a lot when I was a kid. And I told those stories on tour about like swinging on this like rope and things like that and pretending to be Spider-Man. And I, I did that a lot. And I would just climb trees and then jump out of them to be like, how high can I jump before I break anything? before I break my leg. Yeah, and I, I would like fall from like 12 feet high and just be like, man, I survived that. I'm nimble. <laughs> I, I remember just jumping out of uh, of tall things and landing and feeling the shock like rupture from the base of your yeah. and be like, oh, that was a little too high. And then I would like do it again to be like, I wonder if I can mitigate that. I wonder if I can like <laughs> combat roll. <laughs> We should absolutely do a video where we just go into the woods and it's just like Sean and Ethan play in the woods. <laughs> That's exactly how I break my first bone in my life. Oh, yes. Yes. Thinking back about that, we would like, there's so little to do. We would get excited when people would come to like bale the hay in the back of our, like in the fields out the back of our house. Like you'd hear the tractors come and be like, here we go, guys. Summer starts now. <laughs> Oh my god, there's something to do. But we had a, I had like a bow and arrow when I was a kid. Like a, it wasn't like a really powerful one, but it was strong enough. It was like the strongest I had ever seen at that point. And I remember having it and like fucking around and I could, I could fire my arrows pretty far down the field and l lose them really easily if I wanted to. So I was trying to be careful about it. And I remember one time my brother took it off me. I was like, okay, now run. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I'm thinking about it now I'm like that's so fucked up I literally like, ran away from him and he fired one of the arrows at me and I remember like yeah. in slow motion I turned around and saw the arrow like right in front of my eyes and then like ducked and rolled and it went right uh -huh. over my head and I was I keep thinking about that a lot being like I could have died like right there yeah <laughs> and then he would like get them and shoot them straight into the air to see how close we could get them to come straight back down yeah! And then sometimes he would like try and grab them, but then <laughs> one time they it went like a little too far back towards our house and landed in the gutter or the drain pipe. I just like punctured a big <laughs> hole in it. God, how did I not die when I was a kid? We used to do this thing. I had, uh, when I was like 13, I had a big airsoft phase. Did you ever use airsoft guns? I had like a pellet gun, so I guess kind of the same thing. Me and my friends, we would, we would play this game where uh, we would be at my my friend Andrew's house, and he had uh, he had a bunch of trees in his yard that led to the woods, and so we would play this game called Deer Hunter. <laughs> where we would all stand on his porch with all of our airsoft guns. Then one of us would 
I don't know why this was a part of it, would strip down to our underwear and just <laughs> run into the woods. And we, all of us were just, doo, 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 doo. It's like, man is the deadliest game. <laughs> yeah. It's so funny. Jesus. I don't know why. I don't know why the stripping down to our underwear was a thing. Uh, were, were the airsoft just... pellets, like, break skin? Uh, Some of them. If you were uh, close enough, maybe. Yeah, like, one of my friends had, like, a really high-powered airsoft gun. He had, like, Ooh. a sniper that, like, really hurt. Uh, but it, it it didn't hurt as much as, like, paintball or something like that. But, yeah, we would just strip down to our underwear for some reason and just run through the woods and try not to get nailed. I by mean, that's how you do it. That's how you know you get hit. Otherwise, if you have clothes on, it's like well, you can just stand there and get shot all day. How else are you supposed to know that you're alive? Yeah. My brother had one that, had, like, you pull the barrel forward and then pulled it back so it, like, primed the air compressor in it. And then you put, like, a little steel... Like, it was like a cone you put into it and then fire that. And I remember I would, like, sneak that out of his wardrobe and be like, what can I do with this? And I, I think I think it was strong enough to, like, kill birds if you hit them with it. I never, I never did that, but I remember, like, sitting on my, in our yard, like, shooting it down towards, like, the shed of our neighbor to, like, hit the galvanized and hop it over, like, pew, and then, dink, like, way in the distance. And I was like, fucking did it. Nailed it. Awesome. Yet... Where you lived, did you have did you have people behind you guys, or was it just woods? No, yeah, it was just a street with, like, all the houses up that street and the other side, and then either side of those houses was just nothing but nature. Yeah. I so missed that. We just had acres and acres of fields, and I would just run around and get lost in them all day, every day. Why didn't my parents come look for me? I could have got lost and died so easily, so often when I was a kid, and my parents didn't give two fucks. That was the best, though, in the summer, because my I grew up in, like, a pretty big neighborhood, and so my parents were, were like, as long as you stay in the neighborhood, like, see you at dinner or whatever, <laughs> and, like, everyone knew each other in the neighborhood, and, I mean, my town also was pretty small, mm. but anyway, um, I remember always in the fall, uh, the biggest thing was wearing bright colors because if you went and played in the woods, you didn't want to get fucking killed by a hunter. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so my parents were always like, wear an orange hat so you don't get fucking Just going killed. out in a high vis. <laughs> yeah. Just don't wear rem- camel patterns. I remember like thinking that it was such a big deal, being like, I don't want to wear bright colors. I want to wear... Mom, I want to blend in. Come on. <laughs> I want to blend it with my surroundings. Yeah, I don't want I don't want the man to know where I am. I don't want to be part of society anymore. Go off the grid, mom. Also, thinking back to that, I mean, obviously this has happened before, and they were trying to be safe. But what hunter is just like hearing a noise and blindly yeah. shooting into the woods? <laughs> what hunter doesn't look at what they're aiming at and then just shoots? And just be like, oh, there's a rustling in the bushes. Maybe it's a deer or maybe it's a child. Did that four foot tall camo pattern just move? <laughs> <laughs> bang, bang. I mean, I do live in America, so, you know. Uh, ooh, topical. Anyway, let's get into our talks about gun control, finally. Yes, it is time. It is time. This will be called the gun control episode. And that's <laughs> the end of the joke. Welcome back to the gun control podcast. That's just my go-to, whenever I meet Americans and, like, we're doing any sort of formal thing that's supposed to be really, like, it's like an interview or something, and people are like, what do you want to talk about? And I was just like, we can talk about anything. And they're like, oh, anything? And then I always just, like, revert to that, like, so here's my thoughts on gun control. Just And then everyone's like, oh, he doesn't take himself seriously at all. <laughs> uh, okay. It's to, like, level the playing field. Or... Anybody says something deep, and I'm like, how does that make you feel about your dad? <laughs> and they're like, oh, um, all right, please don't take me seriously. It's only funny until it's not. <laughs> until it's not funny. And please never take me seriously, because I want to be able to tell jokes until the day I croak. Sean, I have uh, to pee so bad. That's okay. Do you I- think that we should cut to ad breaks? I don't yeah! know when you do those. Oh, go leak. Just not from your brain, oh. from your penis. Wow, thanks, sponsors. Man, my piss was great. There Welcome. was only a little bit of blood in it. Oh, nice. That's big for you. 
Yeah, it's usually all blood. Pissing out into a blood ocean, baby. Yeah, you know, that's that's what it is sometimes coming out of my bladder. I've never had that. I can't tell that story. No pee in your blood? No. We can change that. We can change that. What do you, what do you have to do to have pee in your blood? Punch in the blood? liver a lot? Blood in your pee. Pee or in pee your in your blood. blood. Depends on how much blood is in it, then it'll be pee in your blood. Just drink a lot of blood. Oh, can you? You can, it'll just make you very sick. <laughs> if you drink your own blood. Yeah, hmm. work it out. Hold on. Here we go. If you drink your... How much of your own blood can you drink for it to be okay? That's that's where that went. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, guess I, so. I was waiting for something prophetic, but... After hearing you hit your head five times as a kid, I should have known You better. were? <laughs> it's like, you don't know me. I mean, that's that's for uh, Mr. Google to find out how much of your own blood. See, these are not Foley sounds either. This is my loud ass keyboard. Talking strictly medical studies say that drinking blood to a certain amount may be acceptable by your body. However, the blood needs to be disease free. <laughs> If one drinks more than a few teaspoons, it can lead to danger. W wait, if it's disease More than a few teaspoons? Of your own blood? Yeah, in very small amounts, say a few teaspoons, and if blood is free from pathogens, blood might not harm you. Beyond that, watch out. Watch Just out. watch out. We're not going to tell you what it does. Just drink a pint watch of your own blood. blood, and then you'll find out. Do you, do you have any, um... Any fears with needles and or donating blood? Yeah, I don't like it. Even watching no. movies where people get needles in their arms. I used to be... Actually, did I? No. I thought I was okay with it. And I'm always that person that's like, I need to like see it go in. Because I need to like... If it like surprises me, I don't like that. I have to watch it. Yeah. I have to watch it. Same with getting tattooed. I, I like being able to watch what's happening. Yeah. It, like the first few goes but it's like okay there it goes i don't want to be like surprised by it and jump yeah which like speaking of tattoos and needing to look at it evelyn's getting like a huge back piece oh done yeah currently right yeah i first of all that must hurt so bad but second of all not being able to watch any of that while it's happening must be rough yeah she she's had three sessions on it now and she has like two more to go i think and the first one, first one hurt like fuck. Second one didn't. And yesterday's one that she did, she was like, that really hurt. God. And it's like, it's probably like three or four hours, right? Yeah, at least. I think the first one <sighs> was, well, she was gone like most of the day, but I guess not all of that is actually tattooing. But yeah, takes a very, very long time. It's going to be like a 12 hour, like 15 hour piece when it's done. What is... It I can't remember off, off the top of my head. Is it uh, Bloodborne? It's Dark Souls 3. It's High Lord Walnir. He's like a guy that you go into the catacombs and you go to grab a goblet and he just like shows up. You have to like ah! you have to attack his bracelets instead of him and they break and then he goes away. But he's a big cool like membrane sword. What's your next tattoo, Sean? You're probably not done on tattoos, yeah? No, I want to, like, fill up... I don't want, like, a full sleeve. I want to get, like, the way you have it as well, and a lot of people have just, like, bits. Kind of like this, where I have, like, one here, one here. Just get all kind of black tattoos everywhere. But I want to get one for my dad. I think he worked for an electrical company when I was growing up, so I think I want to get something that's some sort of, like, electrical cable or electrical, like, pizzazz. You could get... Ah, uh, fucking what's his face from Bloodborne? Pikachu. Yes, Pikachu. What's that boss's name? I can't remember. Dark Beast Parrow. Yes. Evelyn has that on her arm. Oh, that's right. Yeah. That's right. That's right. I went and got Flash done semi recently. Like the Flash? No, like Flash, or like random Flash from an artist. I I don't know what that means. Uh, Flash is like. The uh, the tattoo artist will just like have a book of like random designs oh, that they've done. Oh, okay. And so you can just be like, I want this thing. Yeah. And then they'll go, oh, okay, yeah. I thought you got like I was like the f like Flash Player logo, like. Yeah, I got Ezra Miller tattooed on my back. <laughs> <laughs> a, f a Flash Player tattoo is something Matt Watson would get. He's like the compact disc 
thing on yeah, his wrist. Yeah, he has a 7-Eleven tattoo. He has... The three-eyed fish from Simpsons. One. That's a good one, yep. I like that. What did you get? I'll, I'll show the video people. Uh, it's like a random, like, smiley face. Oh, yeah. Like the fingers thing. pulling up the smile. Yeah. Dude, you a big Joker um, fan? That's sick that you got Joker on you. Yeah, no, I love the jokester. <laughs> um, I think I'm gonna get some sort of boxing tattoo now. Oh, that's a good that idea. The, yeah, that the match is done. Yeah, I think maybe like a little a little pair of gloves or something like that, or yeah, you know, just get the Creator Clash logo. Oh hell yeah! My mom asked me if I was gonna do that. <laughs> I was like, no, I'm not getting the Creator Clash mom! logo. <laughs> No, ma'am. Yeah, um, I want to. I want to get more stuff, but I like when it's like symbols. Mm-hmm. Um, this one, I guess, is a bit different. The E for Ethan. So nice of you, Ethan. Always there, <laughs> always on your wrist. Your first one was Shadow of the Colossus. No, your no, first one Bloodborne. was Bloodborne. Yeah. Do you have any tattoos that you're like, eh, it's fine? Yeah, the Arrival one. Yeah, I got it thinking. I was like, yeah, it means like journey and walk in that movie and I was like it's kind of like life where it ends it's not infinite and it's like messy a little bit you can interpret that each way does it get harder as you grow older or harder in the beginning and I was like that's cool and then everyone's like that's a coffee stain that's a tomato stain or something like that and then now I'm like I I really really like Arrival but it's not like a top 10 movie for me I feel I just feel like there's a better way of doing that idea that I wanted but it was inspired Mm -hmm. by Marisha's tattoo she has one that's I think is a cable and it's like in an infinity, but it's not connected. So it's not infinity, yeah. it's finite. So yeah. it was like a play on life as well, how life isn't infinite. And I was like, yeah, I want something like that. And Arrival was around. I was like, that logogram, whatever it's called, that language was really cool. So you could put T O T M in the center <laughs> and complete it if you want i do want to get more stuff around it i was like you could turn it into like add to it and turn it into like an eclipse kind of like or like sun shade (laughs) speaking of dumb things i did as a child because i was bored (laughs) you ever played the game disguise the penis (laughs) i am sorry okay okay so what you do is it's a drawing game wait hold on hold on hold on (laughs) yeah take a take a beverage okay Okay, so what you do is you draw, one person draws a penis, okay? Okay. And then the other person (laughs) has to turn that penis into something else. You disguise the penis. So a classic one is like, there's a penis, you turn it into an elephant with a trunk or something like that. That's an easy one. Elephant and penis was not where, I I thought you were going to say like banana. I mean, you could do a banana as well. But yeah, it's it's a great game. It's a great road trip game. I'm just glad that that story wasn't like, I got naked, I covered myself <laughs> in stuff in this room, and my penis is like a where's Waldo, a where's Wally in the middle of the room. It's like, find my cock. I did find. Um, because somebody told me about it. I didn't just stumble upon it. <laughs> there is a subreddit. I can't remember what it's called. Um, but it is just like people dressing up their penises. It's like <laughs> cosplaying dicks. It's really funny. It's oh, really, really man. Funny. They, uh, instead of cosplay, it's cock play. Mm, no, that sounds, oh, that sounds man. different. That's a little different. Yeah. But anyway, tattoos. Maybe I'll get a disguised penis on me. Next. Oh, turn your cock into an elephant. Oh, man. And then when you're taking yeah. it out to impress the significant other in your life, you'll just be like, <laughs> you'll, you'll just work on your elephant impression for years and years until you nail it. Do you think anyone's done ventriloquism with their penis? Yeah. Everyone's done anything with their penis. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> if I've thought of it, somebody has done it. That's rule 34, baby. Is That's if Prince Andrew or Prince William or whichever one it was can talk Prince about... Prince Albert? <laughs> putting his mother's face cream on his cock to get rid of the oh. itch. He needs a he needs a podcast. <laughs> There's been too much recently with celebrities and people like that saying stuff where it's like we don't need to know, dude. That we have we have three or four episodes of that. The, the whole start know, of this episode was doing that. 
But the the sexual stuff like that, where at least yours wasn't sexual, it was just a little bit of poop. Or yeah, I think I think balls. the verbiage matters most and the context where we're trying to do it where we're trying to make people laugh. He was doing it in a way where he sounded like the way he said it made it sound he didn't say it at all. It just made it sound like his mother's face was close to his penis. That's where that's what my brain did with that sentence because his mother's dead and that's not what happened at all. But just the way the language he was using and the way he was saying it, that's just what my brain did was put her face next to his penis. It was very weird. It was very weird. And Megan Trainer recently, did you see this? Where she, said, she was fuck talking about like, or something? No. She was talking about how big her boyfriend or husband's dick is. Oh yeah. And was was the just spy like kid. a lot. Yeah, she was like, I always ask, like, if it's fully in, and he just says it's the tip. It's just so big. And it's like, why do you feel the need to tell people this? Yeah. No one asked. Yeah. Or maybe somebody did ask, but Tell still. a story about shitting yourself or something. Just don't tell us, like, the intimacies. Yeah, Megan Trainer, why don't you shit yourself a little bit more, huh? Yeah, why don't you shit your pants? That's That's my favorite... My favorite short joke used to be venison is deer, isn't it? Which used to be like, venison is expensive, right? But venison is deer. And then I was like, and not, not a lot of people get that. <laughs> I was trying to piece that together in my brain. I was like, venison is deer. <laughs> but <laughs> now my favorite short joke, I'm trying to figure out the funniest joke and the shortest amount of words. And now my favorite one is, who shit my pants? <laughs> <laughs> I like who shit my pants. Yeah, because that just adds a whole bunch of more context. It's like, who came in here and shit my pants? <laughs> it's like Goldilocks. It's like, huh? <laughs> there's not enough shit in these pants. <laughs> this is a perfect these amount of These pants shit. are just right. <laughs> I saw a funny tweet this morning that was like, Goldilocks is... Uh, Goldilocks is a fucking savage. She broke into somebody's house and just went, man, this chair fucking sucks. <laughs> Dude, this bed is trash. This bed is awful. Who she, did not this only bed? that, she did it with porridge and beds. She's like, yeah, and chairs. I want to know if it's the same one. Like, is she aligning with one particular person or is it like each of the bears had a different thing? Is that what it's supposed to be? Like, mom's porridge was right, baby bear's bed was right, but dad's chair was right. Or is it like, no, baby bear clears across the board? I think baby bear cleared, but it could also, you know, you know how stories work. They're different in different places. It's all interpretation. So I'm, I'm sure. What's the moral of that story? Don't break and enter or, <laughs> or you will get killed. You'll get mauled by a bear. Yeah, it's just the the version of it. Somebody probably did a version of it in current reality where it's like I broke into someone's house. And like that watch doesn't sell for much, but this watch will sell for a million. And then they, someone just shot her in the home. And I was like, yeah, don't break and enter. <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I try, what's a modern day? I wouldn't. Oh, we could do that. A, a plan I want for us to have by the end of this year is we have to make a Christmas album. It doesn't mm. have to be good. We need to do a Christmas album where we don't take the song seriously. We change the words. You know how, was it Jake Paul did like litmus? I thought you were about to talk about how Aaron Hansen does songs about sucking dick. All that, the time. That's, that's what I'm getting to is that we need to do that together and we need to bring Aaron into it as well because we keep telling him to do it and he's not doing it so we have to be the motivation that gets him across the line yes we do it perfect. for charity or something or uh -huh. to just line our big fat filthy rich pockets and then we we put that out for people to listen to Aaron gets to be on it it's like ho 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 Santa's balls and like or ho 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 <laughs> is like actual hoes Aaron's got a really great rapping voice we can choose one of those songs because we couldn't do it for all of them, but we make like a really over the top music video. Yeah, it's like it's like Live Aid or like let them know it's Christmas time at all. You know that song? <laughs> just, yeah, but I'm so sorry that you, you just compared a Christmas album about fucking dicks to Live Aid. No! In terms of it being people of 
status <laughs> getting together to make something okay. for charity. Okay. That I one, see. Bob Geldof is a saint and he did, <laughs> he's much better than we are. Oh, that's so funny. Oh, I love that. I, I, I wanted more examples, but I couldn't think of any more. So it just ended up, it's like being compared to Jesus. <laughs> being like, we're better. I did, uh, I made a tweet about that like a month ago where I was like, I want streamers and YouTubers to do a We Are The World cover because the thought of, like, XQC doing We Are The World <laughs> is the funniest thing in the world. Like, it's so funny. I wish I knew more of the lyrics to sing in, in XQC's voice. No, he has to be, like, the hype man in the background. Like, someone's like, We Are The World! We Are The World! He needs to be there, oh, like, we, you, we, we're the world, dude. <laughs> 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 we could make this happen. We could. We just need to... We know all the people. I need... See, because I've, I've wanted to take, like, voice lessons for a while anyway, just to train my voice, because I feel like I damaged it over the years of recording. So now, I think being able to sing is a good byproduct of that, because I don't yeah. think you train your voice just for voice acting and just for singing. I think there's a big Venn diagram. So yeah. I'm like, I want to get my voice stronger and better and learn like vocal warm ups properly. But a good side effect of that is probably be able to learn how to sing in key. You're better at it than I am already. So I need to like, I need to raise my level. It's a, it, it's a muscle. Yeah. That you can work. Yeah. You You're just got to stroke it. Man, if, uh, if people out there have any uh, suggestions as far as Christmas songs. Yeah. And I, I mean um, like... Jingle Bells is like Jingle Balls. Like, it's going to be that kind of level. Yes. Silent Night is co is going to be called, like, Come In My Mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Silent Night oh, it could turns be... into Come In My Mouth. <laughs> it could be Silent Shite. Ooh. And it's about me shitting my pants again. <laughs> if I can bring that up in every episode of this podcast we do, I'll be happy. Are we, uh, are we doing every song is, is a parody? I think it should be a parody of something, not all toilet humor. Some of them will be, but I think there's like good analogies to be made elsewhere. Like basically a Weird Al y album. Y album. Yeah. <laughs> Weird Al y album. <laughs> but I, I'm putting it out there now. We're in, oh, well, it's May now. So we have a certain amount of time to get ready. We need to start prepping our holiday podcast themed episodes like what are we doing for halloween are we going to a haunted house somewhere oh, of course man. we are what are we yeah. doing for valentine's day it's already gone can't do that <laughs> valentine's <laughs> next year we gotta make each other a dinner and we gotta do a podcast oh, where we make each other a romantic meal each and we oh, do a candlelit a candlelit dinner episode my oh, meal will be fun. nothing but peanuts <laughs> oh good yes we, you we just should... want my you just want my lips to swell up, don't you? Yeah, I just want those DSLs <laughs> to pop. We should we should do it where we get like a chef or something to teach us how to make like yeah. steak, and then we 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 make each other a steak. We give each other the steaks, then we eat them, and we do a podcast episode as a candlelight dinner. Yes. Oh, and it it can double as an ASMR episode because we'll get the clink clink clink. Of yeah. The, of the of the. Dish of the cutlery and all the stuff. Yeah, it's gonna be we epic. Can a, we can get a, a mic on the on the champagne glass and the little <laughs> the, the 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 bubblies. Yeah, and we can get like a really good like slow mo because we get another episode out of that. The episode of making the steaks, and then we <sighs> the episode of the podcast, and we can do like really nice slow mo shots of like popping the cherry of the champagne, and then spraying it everywhere. <laughs> Who, who was it that didn't know what popping the cherry? Felix. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah that's right. <laughs> He's like, I popped the cherry. I was like, huh? <laughs> Did you? What Hold you, on. What are you talking about? Well, Sean, should we uh, give some people some advice? Yes, I think we're qualified to give people some terrible advice. All right, let's do it. Run the theme song. What? What did I sing last time? Ethan and Sean give bad advice. It's bad advice with Ethan and Sean. And then I went, Bleh! and it worked really well last time. So I think that that's going to be our thing. Now we just need to have someone make a backing track for it. All right. This one comes from Abigail Trembley. Leakers. Oh, uh, leakers, baby. LA leakers. <laughs> 
Ethan and Sean, my name is Abby, and after listening to the bad advice section of the Creator Clash Victory episode, I have a problem. I followed your advice <laughs> on how to get bitches, and I simply have too many bitches. <laughs> I have introduced them to my friends, I've gotten some of them together, and have even come up with a dating schedule. I just still have too many bitches. Wow. How do you recommend I solve this problem? Good job with the podcast. It's all right. From it's Abby. all right. Hey, I'll take it. That's better than bad. Yeah. I I don't think that this is a problem. If you have too many bitches, that's just not a thing. You what you have now is a harem. You have what you need to do is hmm, brothel. Uh, are they interchange interchangeable? Because if you have a brothel, then you can start making money, but. Mm, there's laws and there's like probably a license you have to get. A harem is not a brothel. No, a harem so is just Westerners. a collection, isn't it? Uh, I don't know. What is the definition of harem? Have I been using it wrong my whole life? <laughs> a harem, in former times, the separate part of a Muslim household reserved for wives, concubines, and female servants. Uh, the women occupying a harem, the wives or concubines, of a polygamous man yeah a group of female animals sharing a single mate yeah so it is kind of it's like a collection of females for one partner but a brothel oh no a brothel is, is just a prostitution house <laughs> <laughs> okay i'm not i'm saying you have a harem so the next step could be brothel like that is the tiered <laughs> system <laughs> like, but as those words came out of my mouth i wasn't too jazzed about them <laughs> <laughs> I thought that they sounded funny, and then they came out of my mouth, and I was like, hmm, maybe, maybe take it down a peg. I wasn't jazzed about them. Yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't getting groovy on my lingo. Too many bitches. Well, see, now, now you guys can conquer the world. Now you can go out there and start doing stuff together. Because they're not your bitches. When you're all together like that, it's our bitches. You're getting real close to, like, <laughs> communist commune of bitches. <laughs> oh, I... I don't know if you're thinking of going down this path, but you were you were saying that you can go out and start doing things together. Yeah. What if it's what if it's kind of like um, uh, maybe a uh, a Justice League or a Teen Titans or mm. a, you know a group of vigilantes going the out for the bitches oh. brigade. Yeah, I was just gonna say, what is the group name for these heroes? Yeah, the bitches bunch, the bunch of bitches. Oh. The bunch of bitches. Yeah. Now <laughs> we're Someone's cooking. robbing a bank. It's just like, oh no, it's the bunch of bitches. <laughs> Put the money in the bag. Boosh. Not so fast, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> but they all talk like, uh, what's her name from uh, Mean Girls? It's like, stop trying to make fetch happen. It's not going to happen. It's like, get it, bitches. <laughs> we're going shopping. We're going robbing. <laughs> <laughs> it is just mean girls. Where yeah. They're just like, oh man, I really like you because you're really popular and pretty, but you're kind of mean to me. But that makes me like you more. As you like gravitate around the planet, because this is a planet wide global domination kind of thing, you just start accruing more and more bitches to the bunch. Yeah. Bitches of all sorts, bitches of all shapes and sizes, <laughs> bitches of all denominations. You've got them all. Man. And then you can just put sleeper agents in each community. Oh. So you have an ear on the ground. But you gotta be careful, Abby, that you don't turn into a Starbucks. You have to make sure that all yeah. of these bitches are, are getting what they need. Yeah, don't because franchise. If you're, yeah, if you're, not, if you're not good to the bitches, the bitches are gonna unionize. Yeah. And then... It'll be a coup. I would like to go out and say that unionizing is not bad. Starbucks is <laughs> fucked. But you need to make sure that you're ahead of the curve. This is how that. we get into politics on the podcast is start talking yeah. about <laughs> bitches. The bitches brigade. When you start having your own country of bitches, you're going to have to worry about mm. the economy. You're going to have to start oh, worrying about man. the political climate. Are you a democracy? Is it communism? What are you doing? Man. You're going to have to start making an anthem? That That is naturally the next step that, Abby, that you have to worry about is that you, you're you on the path currently. Yeah. That you have too many bitches. So it's going to become... You have a responsibility. You do. 
It's like it's like us doing YouTube or doing these podcasts. Like once the leakers start forming, like it started out as leaking, like a couple of dribbles. Suddenly we have a puddle. Eventually it's going to turn into a lake. We mm -hmm. got to figure out what to do with that power and that responsibility. Exactly. You could go to your head. You can turn into a psychopath. You can become a cult member leader. <laughs> I think that you should do a little bit of of research. Take America for for example. We Ooh, had, I don't know if America is a good example for anything. No, exactly. It's a bad example. Oh. Take America for example. We had the, we uh, you know we were going. Uh, we we had it all. Our, World we had champs. it all. I guess from the start we were a little fucked because we stole land um, and kicked everyone out. But you know. Use that as an as an example, you know. Of what not we to do. A, a, a new country, we we could have done everything right, and we fucked it all up. Just be responsible. Like people go out and say, "Fuck bitches, get money," but maybe like treat the bitches with care and respect. And if if you pay it forward, double it and pay it forward over and over again. It's just a positivity cycle. Would you like two bitches or would you like to double it? <laughs> double it and pay it forward. It's like, I have 767,000 bitches. What do I do? <laughs> <laughs> what do I do? So I hope that answered your question. Um, if it didn't, you probably shouldn't have asked us. The the end of the email was how do you recommend I solve this problem? And I don't think that this is a problem to be solved. Yeah. I think it's more of a situation that you have to responsibly uh, take care of. Yeah, it's not a problem to be solved. It's a situation to enjoy. Mm -hmm. Go out there, have fun, um, and we'll see you in like four to six weeks when world domination, or at least a country by then. Yeah. We can get the leakers it's together. The, growth yeah. At this point. Leakers together, bitches together. We can figure out which country we want to overthrow. I think at the end of the day, good luck. Godspeed. And uh, <laughs> we hope you do the right thing. Yeah, because we wouldn't. Um, This one comes in from Rowan Richards. And they say, Hi, Rowan. How should I propose to my partner? All the best, Rowan Richards. This would have been such an easy thing to uh, to answer if it was 2015. Just propose at one of our panels. It's the <laughs> perfect time and place. Just come to my tour and propose. Somebody else did. That's true. And it was very cute. You mm -hmm. could have just, you could come on the Brain Leak podcast and propose. You'll have to oh. wait like two or three weeks for the episode to come out for them to hear it. Yeah, it's like a shipping and handling time almost. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You can expedite it though. We can just give you the clip early. I guess so. But don't do that. No, you want it to be don't special. You right. need to like, what you need to get together is with Abby, with the bitches. <gasps> and you can oh, coordinate man. a massive event. That would be sick actually. What you should do is you should stage a heist. Okay? Yes. And, uh, so you're gonna Hold stage on, guys. this heist. Let him cook. Yeah, let me let me cook. You're gonna stage this heist, okay? You're going to get it all together. You are going to what's the opposite of of the bunch of bitches? Um the the collection of guns. <laughs> <laughs> the lonely Larrys. All right, so you're going to stage this heist and you're going to work with Abby to make sure that the bunch of bitches show up. They're going to break down a wall. It's like, uh, I imagine that they kind of come in like like the beginning of the Dark Knight when, when Joker like runs the bus through the side of the, yeah. through the, side of the bank. You kind of do that, all right? And then the bunch of bitches are going to blow a hole in the side of the bank or wherever you're performing this heist. And they're going to go, Hold up, bitch! <laughs> uh, I feel like you're better at quips than I am. How would... What's the best way to start the proposal? Down on your knees, bitch. <laughs> oh, down on your knees, yeah! Yeah, 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 yeah. Get on your hands and knee. Put your hands in the <laughs> air and, like, if you're doing a robbery, it's always like, hands in the air! But this time it's like, knees on the floor! <laughs> <laughs> Bitch! <laughs> <laughs> I think you could go with get on your knees, but then... Get on your knees and just, ready to suck some justice. <laughs> get on one knee and get ready for the rest of your life. <laughs> Whoa! Oh, that's impossible to say no to. And if you have a gun to their head, they can't. Yes. The bunch of oh, bitches man. can threaten. Flip side of that, because if you're not into that, because that takes a lot of coordination, and if you're, like, socially anxious... 
then I say you stage a break-in of your own house while you're sleeping. While both of you yes. are in bed, you have someone come in and break into your house. And you just have other people like ready in the wings just in case someone comes in, they're like, give me all your money! And then you're like, oh, I don't really have much. And then you like reach into your drawers and you pull out the ring. And then in the background, you just hear like clap, clap, clap. clap. And it's like, give me a second. Ba -da 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 -da. What's that song they always sing? Like the boys in the bathroom and they start clapping and it's like, give me a second. I, I need to get my story. Yeah, that one. yeah, yeah, yeah. You just start doing that in the background and then you get down on your knee and you're like, I mean, the rest is kind of up to you. That's where improv yeah. kicks in. Everybody else has done the heavy lifting. And this is where you can figure out if you really want to spend the rest of your life with your partner. Because if they're not a good improv partner, they have to yes and. They have to be a good scene okay? partner. And if they, if they aren't, then they're going to say no, but... And that's not good. So if they if they don't say yes, Anne, you've saved yourself. Because yeah. how are you going to do your improv shows in the future? Yeah, marriage is just one really long scene. And you need a good scene partner for that that's able to play off of you really well. And you, you can read the room. Because if the break-in is happening and they're like freaking out... And they're like, oh my god, like their life flashes before their eyes and they didn't see it with you. Then you can be like, man, I dodged a bullet. Mm -hmm. But she didn't. <laughs> <laughs> a bunch of bitches. <laughs> yeah, you pull off the mask then. If they say no, you pull off the mask and the bunch of bitches are there. And they're like, down on your knees, bitch. Was it Minority Report where, where, where he had a fake face? No, it was Mission Impossible. It's just Tom Cruise anyway. He's always pulling the face off. Oh, like the movie Face Off. Damn. So I hope you guys know now what to do, how to get bitches, how to propose. We've given you great advice to do these. I think life is going to start getting better for you from here on out. I think so as well. Um, and I, this is not really related, but a little bit related because I feel like people are going to draw the bunch of bitches or the bitches brigade or whatever name we're, we're going. Uh, a bunch of bitches like is say, locked in. Bunch of bitches locked in. All right. Um, yeah, I feel like people are probably going to draw them, but I would like to say that the fan art that has come out in this past week or so has been really cool. Yeah. People like merging our faces together and our brains yeah. exploding. Sick. We so want cool. more of that. Just leak. Just leak everywhere. Like, it's all about interpretation. You don't have to take the name literally. Brain leak is just bleh. That's what it is. Yeah. But it can be anything. State of mind. Yeah. Get a bucket. Drill a hole in the bottom. Leak. <laughs> that's our, that's our like, <laughs> phrase to get people motivated. Just drill a hole in the bottom of your bucket and leak, baby. I'm leaking currently. Mucus out of my face. <laughs> he sure is. And I've been pissing this whole time. Wow. Thank you guys for watching another beautiful episode of the Brain League podcast. I hope you had fun. Don't forget as well, if you want to send in advice, if you want to be part of it, questions at brainleakpod.com. What was that, Ethan? I didn't hear it when it came out of my mouth. That was questions at brainleakpod.com. Yeah. Send in your advice there. We'll probably read it out in an episode. We've had so many of them. Thank you guys so much for indulging us and still being here after hearing our ridiculous stories and banter. And, uh, you know... We'll promise next week we won't start off the episode with poop. Yeah. It'll be some other bodily fluid, like cum. Yeah. But I do need to work in my poop story at least once. And it'll happen. Yeah. Thank you guys for watching. Yeah. We'll see you next week, I guess. Or you'll hear us in your ears. Yeah. And what do we always say? Leak out. Stay leaky, bitches. Oh, stay leaky. <laughs> <laughs> okay, bye. bye.